On this episode of the Ask Mike Ronald Show, we have another awesome baseball-related podcast episode. We're going to talk about returning to pitching after surgery, what are some of our criteria for that. We're going to talk about what we think some of the most important components are to arm care programs, and we talk about some mechanical flaws and cues that may lead to increased stress and maybe even injury uh, in the throwing mechanics. The Ask Mike Reinhold Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up here at Champion PT and Performance up in Boston, answering your questions related to fitness, rehab, PT, sports performance, baseball, gymnastics, pole vaulting, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, we'll get it here. But I'm here with Lenny McCrina, Dave Tilly, Dan Pope, Coco Chris, our student from Delaware. And uh, let's get rolling. Let's do it. Jeremy from Honolulu wants to know, what is your Aloha. return to sport criteria and progression for a pitcher recovering from a surgically repaired rotator cuff for Tommy John surgery? Oh, I forgot, I, forgot to do a, I forgot to do the introduction. This is another great baseball-related episode. Oh, good day, guys. It's awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, we're good. All right, so, what's our, so what is it? What's our return to sport um, criteria? And progression for a pitcher recovering. All right, so a pitcher coming back from an injury or surgery, everybody wants to know, how do we know when it's ready to throw? So, I, so when people are rehabbing with me, I don't have a specific, you got to pass ABC test to start throwing, right? Because I build all of that into your treatment treatment sequences, right? So you have to have full motion, right? You have to have good strength, you have good dynamic stability, all these things right here. But if you've followed our treatment progressions to that point, you'll have all that, right? Like you, you, you're you not at, you know, the, the, the phase if you don't have full mobility. You know, we're not doing advanced dynamic stabilization stuff if you don't have baseline strength. So the number one thing is you have to have an appropriate, appropriate treatment progression. Everybody always says like, oh, the doc said I can start throwing week 16. Well, if you look like crap week 16, you're not ready to throw, right? So you you have to have gone through the right treatment progression. You have to have done the right exercises and all that built into it. Now, are there specific criteria? Well, yeah, you have to have full motion. You have to have good strength. You have to have good dynamic stability and you know have good comfort in this layback position. You have to have all those things, right? You have to, to do that. Once you start throwing a ball, if you're suboptimal, all of those blemishes are going to be very obvious, right? And you're just going to hurt and you're just going to go downhill. It's not going to go well. So if somebody comes to you, they have 20% deficit in strength, they don't have full layback kind of external rotation, you say, well, let's start throwing because it's week 16. It's not going to go well, right? So they just got to look good. I mean, heck, I hate to oversimplify, but there's no like special test you can do and say like you can or can't start throwing. Yeah, what, and then we, when you realize that they seem to be progressing well, they got the emotion, they got baseline strength, then you start taking things to the next level through plyometrics through increasing uh, hands-on stuff with uh, resistance stuff at end range, um, progressing plyometrics one-handed to two-handed. How do they respond to that? How's their soreness? How, did, how were they able to perform the exercise? Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that we will progress somebody and kind of test them and see, because we think plyometrics, well, we know plyometrics, kind of take it to the next level. So if they can do that and they can hit those phases as well, time out of surgery, what what uh, what was involved, what tissues were involved, what's their ultimate goal, how, f how far out, do they need to be ready, are we trying to be ready, it's November, but they're trying to be ready for June, how, why are we going to start a throwing program now, so so many different things that play into how we progress somebody, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was good. Cool. Joe. Josh from Houston, hi guys, I know you work a lot with baseball pitchers and I see all these arms going down everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Can you speak a little about what a proper arm care program consists of? All right, so, so big question, what's a proper arm care thing? Well, I, when you build an arm care program, and just like any other sport, so you can do this with any sport, right? You break it down by what are the unique needs of that athlete, okay? So what do you need to have to be an athlete? So for a baseball pitcher, you need to have layback, right? You need to have good posterior <coughs> rotator cuff strength, good dynamic stability, super strong shoulders, right? And those are things you need to be unique at your sport, right? Then what are the unique stresses from your sport? So the the more you throw, the more you look like poop, right? So we know that, right? You get tight and you get tired from throwing, right? Your rotator cuff muscles, your dynamic stabilizers get completely like fatigued and don't do a good job of, of, of uh, keeping the shoulder joint together um, the more you throw. 
you start getting chronic <laughs> adaptations to the cumulative stress of the range of motion from too much throwing. So all the decelerators, all the eccentric components, like your elbow flexors, your external rotators, your, uh, your lat, your teres, all these guys start to get tight um, from the act of throwing from the cumulative eccentric trauma. Okay, so once you know the unique needs and then the unique kind of results, I guess, from, from doing your high level sport, you can build your arm care program. So you need to have good mobility, right? So arm care program has to focus on good mobility and kind of maintaining that total rotational motion that we talk about all the time. So look that up on my website if you want to read more about that and the concept of GERD and everything. But we want to maintain that total rotational motion. We want to have good arm strength of the rotator cuff muscles, the scapular stabilizers, all those things. Once they're strong, we want to have good baseline dynamic stabilization of them so they can do that. That's your arm care program, but there's also full body strength and conditioning. There's also throwing techniques. There's mechanical things to like kind of work on. So what goes into an arm program? It's big. It's encompassing. It's, it's all those things. But I think that's kind of like our foundation of what we do. So I know that was a ton, but well anything that's else? So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mike died. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. John and Greg from Alexandria. What are some of the most damaging, dangerous cues given to pitchers, and why are they damaging? What are some better cues that can help optimize better pitching? Wait, players? who's this from? Because I think I remember. There's two people, right? Yes, John and Greg. John and Greg. So this is interesting. John and Greg from Alexandria. Like, I, I don't know if you guys were hanging out together, but submitted like the same question like on the same day. It's like the, almost the same exact question. Two different names from Alexandria. So, so I, I think you guys were uh, all hanging in there. I thought that was cool. So you guys are hanging, talking about the those uh, cues. So um, I thought that was a good question to answer. So what are the most dangerous cues? Len. Throw like Dave. You're, uh, yeah, don't throw like Dave. So, uh, <laughs> Len, your background with ASMI and Dr. Fleissig and stuff, what do you think? What are some of the most dangerous things you've seen? Yeah, I think obviously the biggest thing that has come out of ASMI is throwing fatigue. So I think throwing multiple days in a row or just throwing, not even multiple days in a row, because if you throw 10 pitches, maybe you're fine. But I think over a period of a so I don't know, some sort of window that you're looking at. If they throw fatigue, their, their risk of getting injured goes way up. It's like 36 times increased risk of injury uh, it, by throwing fatigue. So you got to monitor their level of fatigue, their strength, their motion, as Mike has mentioned previously. But I think if you're trying to push them because it's the end of the season or, uh, or they're the best kid on the team and you're trying to get them to, you're trying to win the game and you need that kid out there all the time, that's why we've developed pitch counts. That's why we've developed... Uh, when they can throw, depending on how many pitches they've thrown in a session. So I think you got to monitor that and monitor that kid closely because if you're trying to push that kid and they're tired, that's just a kiss of death. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, so. I mean, to go back to your question about like cues or like mechanical things, there's plenty. I mean, let's. I mean, I, maybe let's go in order and we'll talk sequencing. So. It's not necessarily that one specific thing can cause an injury. Yeah. You gotta think it's all a spectrum. So when you land, the, the way your arm is positioned, the way your foot is positioned, you have like a middle ground of where your arm should be. And, and no one, we don't all have to be that same exact thing, but you realize any deviation from that in either direction is going to slowly increase stress. So when you land, your arm should be abducted, externally rotated like 65 degrees, kind of in that like nice strong athletic position. If you're way further back in external rotation or you're inverted, like an inverted W, those are big, broad ends of the spectrum, you're gonna really increase stress because this increases a little bit, this increases it more, 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 and finally you're inverted, it, it, it increases the stress. So with cues, there's no like definitive, if you do this, it's bad. It's if, you, if you're deviating from this, it's more stressful. I think that's how you have to think of it because throwing a baseball is stressful. You know, it is what it is. This just adds more stress. So some of the things that's been shown in ASMI's research and research of others, plenty of others out there. I think if we start from the beginning is the way your foot lands, right? So if you land too open or too closed, right? You want to just be slightly in line to slightly closed, right? In terms of like your foot landing position. Any deviation away from that increases the stress. The way your foot is positioned. So if your toe is pointing out or pointing in, again, it should just be like a little bit slightly internally rotated there. So kind of like for a right hand guy, it's just a little bit in towards uh, third base or maybe like one o'clock on a clock. Um, that's, that's kind of what you're looking for. Any deviation 
patient with your foot wide open or really closed is going to increase stress, right? If your arm's too low, so you're not abducted at foot plant and you have this low arm slot all the way through your release, it increases stress on your arm. So to being too low of an arm. Same thing with external rotation. If we kind of use this as the example at the beginning, you should have about 65 degrees of external rotation at foot plant, right? So everybody wants to talk about inverted W. Inverted W is irrelevant. It's about when your foot lands. So if I'm in my windup and I'm completely inverted and I, and I get back up to the right position by the time I get to the foot plant, it doesn't matter. It's all about the timing of it. Okay, so it's at foot plant, are you 65 degrees ag, uh, externally rotated, about 95 degrees abducted or so. Those are the positions you want to be in. Too low, it hurts. Too high, it hurts. Too far back, no good. Too, you see what I'm saying? Like it increases stress there. Um, we have that. If you're coming through and you wind up and you're too close to your head, right? So you have too much elbow flexion, kind of like Keith Folk. I'm trying to think he's like the good example. I always think like the ball in your ear kind of thing. That's more stress on your arm, right? If at release you're too much extended, you're not like kind of flexed a little bit, that's too much. So you see what I'm saying? Like there's all, we found like this middle ground of mechanics and there's no perfect mechanics, but those are some of the cues that the more you deviate away from that mean, the more you put stress on your arm. Does that make sense? Is that too long? Yeah, just Did you follow any of that? Was that good? What else, Coke? So that was three. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too much. I think we need to expand on that. Maybe I need to write some stuff or whatever. I think let's build a course on that or something. But I think that'll be good to expand. So um, you know, good baseball questions. We we appreciate that every now and then. It's it's good to kind of. Uh, chunk the baseball together for those that are, you know, specifically interested or not interested in baseball. So, oh, yeah. So you guys dominated yeah. this. So, um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us again. Keep asking away. We love the questions. Go to MikeRinald.com, click on the podcast link, and check out um, some of our uh, our past episodes. Uh, be sure to subscribe, review us on iTunes. All those those things I'm supposed to say at the end of a podcast. Please do them for us, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.